The next book that I finished was The Girl Who Fell Beneath Fairyland and Led the Revels There by Catherine M. Valente. This is a children's slash YA book, the second book in Valente's Fairyland series, and I adored it. This is the continuing adventures of a young girl from Omaha, Nebraska in Fairyland. In the first book, she's whisked off to Fairyland by the Green Wind when she's 12 years old, has adventures, and then comes back home. In the second book, she desperately wants to go back to Fairyland. The real world is not as exciting now that she's been in Fairyland. She waits a year, and then she manages to get back into Fairyland through a crack. And when she does, Fairyland is different. Something has gone wrong. It turns out her shadow that she lost in the first book has descended to Fairyland below and is stealing the shadows of other people in Fairyland and they're sinking into Fairyland below and that's stealing the magic because in this, in this world, people's magic comes from their shadows apparently. And September feels responsible for this. It is her shadow doing it. And so she goes off on her next quest to get people their shadows back and fix the situation to make sure that Fairyland continues to exist. I love how Valente talks to you through the narrator in the story about what children are like, how children behave, how they think. In the first book, uh, September is, is called Heartless, you know, that all children are heartless in some way. And in the second book, she's 13 now, she's kind of growing up and she's growing a heart and it's painful. And I, I like what Valente has to say about that because growing up is hard. Learning emotions like regret and concern for others and, and pity and empathy and sympathy is, that's something that you have to go through when you're a child. You have to get out of your own head and feel for others. And I really understood what September was going on there. Growing up is painful and it's, it's kind of bittersweet to read about. The last novel that I finished this week was The Steers Woman by Rosemary Kirstein. And oh, yes, go read this book, guys. It was so good. I discovered this book through Catherine at the Androids Conundrum. She did a review on it. I will link that down below because Catherine does really great reviews and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to, to explain this as well as she did. It takes place on a planet, on a world where humans seem to have forgotten about advanced technology or science. There's this implication that there was or is advanced technology on the planet that people don't know about. Like the planet might be in the middle of being terraformed. Something, something is going on that in everyday people don't know. There are wizards who are very secretive. They don't really explain how they get their powers. They can do these really big spells and they fight for control over areas with each other. The implication, of course, there is that wizards are not actually wielding magic. They come from a community or they're just people who have figured out technology and science and then use it as if it were magic. There are also steers women who are they're kind of, I think of them kind of like really amped up librarians. <laughs> this is what I think of them like. Um, the main character of this book, Rowan, is a steers woman. And they, they are always looking for answers. They're always looking for more knowledge. And their role in society is to spread knowledge. They think that knowledge should be free and that people will benefit from knowing more. The main character, Rowan, is trying to discover where these blue gems come from. She's discovered them scattered across the known world and is very mystified about how they got to where they were about 35 years ago and what they are meant for. They are not like normal gems. And she meets up with an outskirter woman, a barbarian warrior named Belle, and they go off on this, on this quest to discover where the gems come from. But when Rowan is asking more and more questions about these gems, she attracts the attention of wizards who do appear to know more about the gems and don't want other people to know. And for the first time ever, the wizards start meddling with the steers women and trying to get in their way. They've mostly avoided each other up until this point, but now the wizards are threatening the the rules of the steers women's existence and what they do and, and and just totally blocking their role in society and i love this book guys i really really enjoy books 
where people are discovering advanced technology, I think that some people might find this to be boring. Like, you can obviously tell because you have this knowledge that what these people are looking at isn't magic, it's actually science. No, is this a magical spell or are they just being electrocuted? <laughs> you don't know. Um, but even though I can often guess what the technology really is, I enjoy seeing characters go through that journey of discovery and astonishment and just learning more about the world. This is what I really liked about some of the final books that Anne McCaffrey wrote in the Dragon Riders of Pern series. Pern is a colonized planet and the people eventually forget that, but then in the later books they discover the relics and artifacts of like the ship that brought them down to their original settlement and everything. And that was really cool to read about. I just, the later books in that series weren't the best, but that's what I really enjoyed about them. And the Steerswoman does that same type of thing for me. It's, it's kind of this visceral, emotional thing. I, I don't know why. It could be a nostalgic thing because I first read about this kind of thing when I was a child. It's just so fun for me to read. I, <laughs> I'm gushing at this point. The graphic novel that I finished this week was Sex Criminals uh, Volume 1, One Weird Trick by Matt Fraction and Chip Zdarsky. I read this because it was not, it is nominated for a Hugo Award this year. Um, I heard about this a while ago, a couple of people on booktube had read it and I watched their reviews and I was never that impressed by the concept, which is that two people who can stop time when they orgasm and discover each other and then they decide to use their ability to rob a bank. This idea does not appeal to me anyway. It sounds like a gimmick in order to write a vaguely pornographic graphic novel with, you know, a very tenuous plot to hold together the scenes of nudity. I might be a little bit hard on this graphic novel, but I really didn't enjoy this. It's supposed to be a sexy, fun, funny romp, and I didn't think that at all. I didn't find any of this to be funny. It wasn't humorous. It's only humorous if you enjoy a lot of dick jokes, guys. I don't appreciate that kind of humor at all. And I'm not kidding, there are so many dick jokes. Pretty much any major panel, there's something in the background, like a poster on a wall or whatever, that's a dick joke. So if dick jokes and lots of pictures of boobs are your kind of thing and you think that two people having sex in public bathrooms and then robbing banks is your kind of thing, then go have fun with this. I thought that the the characters were not my kind of thing. It felt like the authors were just trying too hard with everything. Like they, they wanted to be sexy and fun so they have lots of sex and not that much fun stuff. They want to give sympathetic background stories to their characters but it felt kind of cliche to me. The, the woman, Susie, has this backstory where one of her parents is dead. And I'm like, okay, you want to make your character more sympathetic and your first idea is, let's kill off one of her parents. I think I've read that story before, multiple times. The guy, he does this really disgusting thing at work. And I could not like his character after that. It was just, that was just disgusting. And then the sex police show up. Yes, they're called sex police and they're costumes. And I was just, no, 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 no. Nah. I gave this one two stars on Goodreads. The final thing that I read this week was actually a novella. I read Winter Fair Gifts by Lois McMaster Bujold, the next story in my Vorkosigan Saga adventure. This book, this novella, excuse me, um, comes right after the last book, A Civil Campaign, where Miles is getting ready to get married. It's told from the perspective of one of the armsmen in the Vorkosigan house, uh, Roik, who is a... Roik? Roik? <laughs> He's a, a secondary character in a civil campaign. He has a very memorable appearance. <laughs> and... Um, he, he's the eyes through which we see these people showing up to Vorkoskin House uh, for the wedding. And uh, Roik, Roik, I wish I knew how to pronounce that, um, is assigned to hang out with Sergeant Tara, one of Miles's friends, ex-flings from previous books, who is genetically modified. She's extremely tall and she has fangs and, and talons or claws or whatever. This was a really lovely novella. Um, it just kind of fills in some gaps in the storyline, I, I suppose. It wasn't the 
best Rokosigan Saga story. I've enjoyed uh, previous novellas like Borders of Infinity more than this one, but just as a, a quick story in between books, this was this was really fun and I would say don't skip it if you really enjoy all of your Miles stories and you want to see him finally get married. That is everything that I read this past week. It was quite good. I don't really know what my plans are going to be for this coming week. I'm going to be busy. I'm going to be out of town for a couple of days for a work event, and I'm just not making any extensive plans for this week. So I'm currently reading three books. I'm reading Cryptonomicon by Neil Stevenson. I'm about 200 pages into it. I'm reading Trumps of Doom by Roger Zelazny, the sixth book in the Amber Chronicles and the first book in the Merlin Cycle. And today I will be starting on The Outskirter Secret by Rosemary Kirstein, the next book in the uh, Steers Woman series, which I'm really looking forward to. Um, if you've read any of these books or you want to read any of them, please let me know down below. I'd love to hear from you guys. Um, I always like hearing your guys' comments and thoughts on books. And thank you for watching. I will be back to talk to you again in some video. And until then, bye. Roic. <laughs> the Armsman.